Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 onwards. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, for some of us, today, especially in this world, sin has become very subjective. It's become very relative. And therefore, we have this tendency to think to ourselves, certain things I look as sinful, certain things I see them as being okay. After a full retreat, I remember a person who came to me and said, Father, I can understand that you people have to stand on the, on the podium and preach, and you have to preach to all the people, and it's a general public. And I can understand that you have to speak against drinking and smoking. But Father, honestly, just between the two of us, honestly, little bit of it, what's the problem, Father? After one full retreat, five days of a retreat, this is how many of us are. Sin after some time for us becomes very subjective. And you can pick and choose what you feel is sin. You know what cafeteria Christians is? You enter into the cafeteria, you don't take everything. You take what you like, what suits you. And that I believe is the problem of today for us Christians. Even with sin, we pick and choose what we want. Till and when we are convinced that it is a sin. So till and when we are convinced it is a sin, where does this sin lie? It still lies around us. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is why sin keeps afflicting us time and again. Even though we are aware of what sin is, even though we know which parts of our life are being afflicted by sin, yet keeping sin around us is the reason why sin keeps afflicting us. This is very beautifully brought out by St. Paul. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. This is St. Paul's conflict when St. Paul says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very things that I hate. I do not understand my own actions. I do not do the things that I want, but I do the things that I hate. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is not a conflict with sin. It is a conflict with the self. It is a conflict with the self. I do not understand my own actions. We're not talking about sin's actions. I do not understand my own actions. I do not do the things that I want to do, but I end up doing the things that I hate. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why do you think it's a conflict with the self? It is a conflict within the self. And this is the story of all our lives. Is because deep within us, sin is rooted. Deep within us, we have let the roots of sin enter in. If you know basic gardening, you'll realize. If you have basic knowledge of science, you'll realize 
that every plant has roots. Where does the nourishment come from? It's pulled in from the soil through the roots. Now, is it enough for you to just take water and put it on the leaves? No, it doesn't make a difference. You know, water on the leaves, what it does? It washes the plant. Praise the Lord. But that seeps inside into the soil and the nourishment is got from the soil through the roots. Praise the Lord. So let's imagine the plant, the, the roots and the nourishment that the roots are busy sucking in. The nourishment that the roots are busy sucking in. Now what nourishment is available or what nourishment is, is there around is what this root is going to suck in. That is how it is with our lives. The roots where we plant them, that is from where it is going to get its nourishment. And that nourishment is going to manifest itself in our lives. So if sin is time and again manifesting itself in our life, where is the nourishment coming from? The soil of evil. The soil of evil. If today you look into yourself and you think to yourself, why is it I've been attending retreats? Why is it again sin is afflicting me? Because the roots happen to be faulty. Praise the Lord. I remember we've been going to Australia for many years for retreats. There's a man who has been attending these retreats for more than nine years now. And this time he came and told me, Father, I can't understand. I've been attending these retreats in all sincerity. It's not that I'm not sincere during the retreats. I'm very sincere. I come inside. I don't talk to anyone all throughout the retreat. I'm focused. I listen to the talks. I make decisions. I go back. And in barely three to four weeks, I'm back to the very same experience. I'm back to square one. Nothing changes in my life. I'm back to square one. As we prayed over... I prayed over him. We sat for some time in prayer. As we were praying, the Lord revealed very clearly, this man is going back into situations where there is a lot of sin. He's going back into situations where there is a lot of sin. He has his own friend circle. And come what may, he will not give up on them. Now the friend circle is fine. But they always have their bouts of drinking. And he will go during those moments at the bouts of drinking. And he says, initially it's fine. Initially I'm able to say no because I've attended a retreat. After one week of the retreat, the effects of the retreat start wearing out. Now from where is he getting his nourishment? From the retreat he got his nourishment from the retreat. After that from where is he getting his nourishment? He's getting it from the situation that has been created. The soil that he has placed himself under. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is why the word tells us very clearly. We read in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 19. The word says, They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For people are slaves to whatever masters them. People will be slaves to whatever masters them. If you give sin an opportunity around you, you will keep getting your nourishment from sin. You will keep getting your nourishment from sin. The fruit of sin is death. What kind of death are we talking about? What kind of death are we talking about? Now, even if you are holy and you're a saint, will you die? Praise the Lord. Then is the Bible lying to you? That the effect of sin is death. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What death is sin leading us to? It is a spiritual death within ourselves. A death in our relationship with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if we give sin an opportunity, sin will keep nourishing us. And that is why it is important to be rooted not in sin, but to be rooted in Christ. 
to be rooted in Christ it means identifying what soil you're getting your nourishment from it's all about identifying what soil you're getting your nourishment from praise the lord hallelujah now if you have your roots in sin if you have your roots in sin in the nourishment that you're getting is from sin dear brothers and sisters it's important for us to understand when you have your roots in sin you will start bearing fruit rapidly you will bear fruit rapidly anyone who's rooted in sin will they bear fruit matthew chapter 7 verse 17 onwards every good tree bears good fruit but the bad tree bears bad fruit so even if you're if you have your roots in sin will it bear fruit it will bear fruit it will bear fruit but the fruit will be bad the fruit will be bad praise the lord hallelujah and that is why the moment you put your your roots into things that are evil you will be able to see people who get a lot of success if they have their roots in evil they will have a lot of success you see them rapidly rising career wise they'll rise financially they'll rise when you look at them everything is beautiful and you look at your miserable self and you say lord i've been coming here praying 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 my miserable life my bank account is always empty my children always nasty i don't have any new clothes my husband barely buys me anything he's deaf every time i tell him that i want a new cloth and you look at someone else's life they are leading a life of insincerity they are leading a life of adultery they are leading a life of sin but you can see them rise rise where i want you to understand this difference because this is how we people after a retreat go back and try and evaluate what is happening in our lives to the life of someone else so these people are a success they are they are rising where in this world in this world that defines success and failure in this world that defines success and failure this world could define mother teresa's life as a failure because it is she lived in poverty who is considered a success one who has a fancy car one who has a beautiful house has an exceptional job isn't that what we look at at times we look at the brokenness that we are going through i'm having a financial problem i'm having a situation where i'm not able to give my child the best of education so when we define success and failure it's defined based on how the world defines it and that is where we start getting very depressed that is where we start thinking to ourselves i've been faithful to god but the others are unfaithful they are finding their nourishment in evil yet they are bearing fruit fruit of this world and that is not what god promises us god has never promised you a fancy car the lord has never promised you a fancy house if you have got it fine but it's not a promise of god don't ever think to yourself that the promises of god are solely material the promises of god are always spiritual it is in his realm not that material things are wrong not that material things come from evil but the fact remains when we start looking at the material things that other people who are committing evil are receiving we compare it to ourselves we start getting depressed because we think to ourselves our roots are now wrong but as long as you're rooted in Christ you will bear fruit fruit in plenty fruit according to the will of god go and identify the paths in your life where sin is pushing its nourishment into you the poison is getting into you and that is how sin always pushes his poison into us that is how the evil one always pushes his poison into us do you know how snakes venom works you know the snake is not able to chew it doesn't chew anything it barely has any teeth 
the snake's venom goes into the person it can be a human it can be it can be an animal and the venom starts breaking up the tissues and the interior parts of the of the of the prey i'm going to put it prey that could include you or me or any animal praise the lord so it puts its venom inside it breaks the tissues of the of the of the prey and the enzymes now the poisonous enzymes keep working inside so outside the prey will look fine but inside what is happening it's all crumbling and falling it's all crumbling and falling that helps the the snake to swallow and digest it swallow and digest it praise the lord apply that to sin that is how sin afflicts us it pushes its venom inside we won't even realize it it could be a small little bite we won't even realize it on the outside everything will look beautiful so you keep looking in the mirror i look so beautiful you keep looking at yourself you look at your situations around you everything is so beautiful look at your family my children are doing well they have gone to this nation they are studying here they are working there my 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 wife my husband look at this such a beautiful family everything is going on fine but somewhere or the other the evil one has struck and the venom is moving inside we will not only we will never realize it till one fine day you fall dead praise the lord hallelujah 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 are you now more scared of the snake good praise the lord hallelujah just imagine you and i are so terrified of the snake but sin keeps lurking around and we are taking the nourishment nice and beautifully we are taking the venom nice and beautifully every day day in and day out we are pulling in the nourishment from the from the venom of the evil one and we are poisoning our self one person came and told me father if only jesus had got rid of satan everything would have gone what rubbish satan's nature is to pump in evil our nature is not to keep sucking in evil we sit around trying to think that the whole problem lies with satan and so jesus just has to defeat satan and everything will be over if jesus defeats satan we will create another satan because we are so used to sucking in evil stop finding out where your roots are going and taking nourishment pull yourself out of it and start getting rooted in christ when you get rooted in christ you will lose out on comforts pleasures of the body you will lose out on comforts and pleasures of the body but you will be able to restore your soul colossians chapter 2 verse 6 as you therefore have received christ jesus the lord continue to live your lives in him continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith praise the lord continue to live your life in him you know in the bible in the old testament there was one man who was always said to have a heart like that of god's who was that david david was a man whose heart was faithful to god david had a son who was that solomon solomon was very famous for what not for his wives but for his wisdom praise the lord when god asked him if you want wealth or you want wisdom what did he ask for he asked for wisdom now solomon was a man filled with wisdom but later solomon would go into sin solomon would go into sin why did solomon go into sin why did solomon go into sin he started marrying a lot of wives that's why i always think to myself i really wonder what kind of wisdom he had 
because if you have any kind of wisdom you will definitely keep only to one <laughs> if less all the better <laughs> praise the lord but solomon anyway got married to many as a result of which he started worshiping many gods he started worshiping many gods now god had made a promise to david and to solomon we read about this promise first king chapter 9 verse 1 onwards when solomon had finished building the house of the lord and the king's house and all that solomon desired to build the lord appeared to solomon a second time as he had appeared to him at gibeon the lord said to him i've heard your prayer and your plea which you have made before me i've consecrated this house that you have built and put my name there forever my eyes and my heart will be there for all time as for you if you will walk before me as david your father walked with integrity of heart and a righteousness doing according to all that i have commanded you and keeping my statutes and my ordinances then i will establish your royal throne over israel forever praise the lord hallelujah so god told solomon warned him and said if you keep my commandments if you are rooted in me if you are rooted in me i shall protect you all the days of your life what did solomon do he went and rooted himself in sin now you should remember solomon was a man of god he was a man with wisdom and yet the evil one was able to penetrate dear brothers and sisters look into our lives when we get careless about it how many times is the evil one penetrating and pushing his venom into us how much more careful are you and i called to be are we today sucking in sin from the evil one because of our carelessness are we sucking in sin from the evil one because we are so overconfident or are we sucking in sin from the evil one trying to justify what we've been doing and trying to act self righteous as long as we keep thinking to ourselves that we are righteous and that self righteousness is there in us satan can keep penetrating he can keep penetrating if i sit in my prayers and i sleep it's called self righteousness not that i'm tired but that i'm letting my guard down and that is exactly what solomon did he let his guard down he let his guard down and as the word says satan prowls around like a roaring lion waiting to devour the moment we've let our guard down he'll pounce and from then without even realizing it we will keep taking nourishment from him and we'll not not realize it because we are in this big bubble of our self righteousness it's time for us to wake up wake up and open your eyes from your inner depths of your heart and see from where you've been taking your nourishment be honest with yourself and realize the time of change has come have a desire in your heart lord at some point or the other i've let my guard down i've been careless i've been taking nourishment from the evil one and that is the kind of fruits that i've been producing lord give me the humility to look into myself to thirst for a change to thirst for a transformation In the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit